Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the 10th topic of Form 3 work, which is called Gas Laws. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that challenges are meant to help us discover our strength, but not to expose our weaknesses. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the second law, which is called the Charles Law. So it bears the name Charles Law because this particular Charles Law was first formulated in the year 1780 by a French physicist by the name uh, Jacques Charles. So because of his second name Charles, it was named the Charles Law. So to verify this, you, we usually use a gas. A gas is usually trapped in a capillary tube by a bit of concentrated sulfuric acid. So the purpose of Kong sulfuric acid is simply uh, to dry the air or the gas that is being used in that particular case. Then the gas is heated in a water bath and the volume is usually measured by uh, the length of the air column. So remember we have our source of heat here, so it is heating our water. So the purpose of the water bath is simply to ensure uniform distribution of heat throughout uh, all the apparatus that are within this particular experiment. So to ensure that distribution of heat is uniform both to the thermometer and also to our gas, which is trapped uh, by use of concentrated sulfuric acid. So of course, when the temperature of the water is increased, we expect the thermometer to detect a higher temperature. Similarly, when water is heated, we expect that the molecules of the air that is trapped in here, those molecules will actually gain kinetic energy. So when they are heated, they will gain kinetic energy, hence increasing in volume. That is, when they gain kinetic energy, the air will actually expand, hence its volume will also increase or it will want to occupy more space. So as the volume increases, this pushes our um, concentrated sulfuric acid upward, hence increasing the length of our air column. Remember when the length of the air column increases, that simply translates to an increase in volume because we say that volume is directly proportional to the height, which is just the length of our air column. So this particular experiment is repeated uh, several times, of course, by heating water to different levels and recording the values of uh, uh, temperature with their corresponding length of that particular air column. So this is repeated at various temperatures and of course the results are usually tabulated. So after tabulating the results, we usually plot a graph. So we have graphical representation of the results is as shown below. So of course when you heat, we expect the air to expand, hence uh, the volume, that is the length of the air column will also increase, meaning that the volume of the gas will be increasing as the temperature increases. So this one simply shows you that the temperature and the volume of the gas are actually directly proportional to one another, such that if the volume increases, that is, if the temperature increases, uh, the gas, that is the air, will actually, its molecule will gain kinetic energy, causing the air to increase. Of course, when the air expands, the volume automatically will also uh, increase, hence increasing the length of the air column. So an increase in temperature will cause an increase in the length of the air column, hence causing an increase in the volume of the air that is trapped within uh, this particular uh, apparatus. So um, when you plot a graph of volume against temperature in degrees Celsius, this will be the expected graph. Again, in this particular case, the smallest temperature will be negative 273, but of course, no gas will exist at a temperature uh, of less than zero degrees. Remember, in most cases, most gases, if you cool them to a temperature of zero degrees, the gas will actually either condense or it will, uh, it will solidify. So remember that most gases will always exist at temperatures which are far much greater than zero degrees, but at a temperature of uh, below zero degrees, the gas will actually condense to form a liquid or in some cases, some gases can actually solidify. For example, if you are talking of steam, the steam could solidify to form uh, the solid ice. And remember, we are talking of the gas laws. So actually, this particular gas laws will not be obeyed. That's why in this particular, when we are testing the laws, we usually use what we call an ideal gas. So an ideal gas is simply a gas that will obey all the gas laws perfectly and of course ideal gases do not exist so we are saying that 
uh, the graph of volume against temperature in degree Celsius will start from negative 273 degrees. Then, of course, the volume can only the volume of that particular gas can only exist at temperatures of zero degrees and above. So, at temperatures of zero degrees and below, so the gas will not exist because the gas will condense to form either a liquid or it can also solidify to form uh, a solid. Then if a graph of volume against temperature now in Kelvin in Kelvin is plotted, this graph will be obtained. Again, here we are using dotted lines because uh, the gas will not exist between these particular temperatures. But at a temperature of 273, remember 273 Kelvin corresponds to uh, zero degrees. That is on the Celsius scale. So at 273 degrees, that is where the gas will start existing. So at temperatures which are higher than 273, the gas will exist, but at temperatures which are below 273 uh, Kelvin, actually the gas will condense. So we are saying that absolute zero temperature simply refers to the lowest temperature at which the volume of a gas is assumed to be zero. The lowest temperature at which the volume of a gas is assumed to be zero. Remember when the volume of a gas is zero, actually it simply means that that gas is not existing. That's why these scenarios can only take place for ideal gases. Then it is impossible to get absolute zero, that is to get to the temperature whereby the volume of the gas is zero. So it is actually impossible, that is in real life, uh, to get absolute zero for gases because gases will condense, gases usually condense at fairly higher temperatures. That is simply to say at a temperature of below zero degrees, actually the gas will not exist. Uh, that means it will exist in other forms, for example, in liquid form. Therefore, we will not be talking of a gas. And of course, in that case, the Charles law will not be obeyed because the Charles law deals with the gases. Similarly, at a temperature of below 273 Kelvin, actually the gas will not exist because it will have condensed actually to form a liquid. So you can be asked to give a reason why uh, it is impossible to get absolute zero for the gases. So the reason is because most gases will condense or they condense at fairly higher temperatures, that is at temperatures which are higher than uh, 273 Kelvin or at temperatures which are higher than zero degrees. Now, having looked at the experimental relationship between temperature and volume, and we have seen that volume and temperature are actually directly proportional to one another, such that as the uh, temperature increases, the volume of the gas will also increase as depicted by these particular graphs. Therefore, uh, the results can be summarized by the Charles law. So the Charles law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature if pressure is kept constant. So in the Charles law, we are keeping the pressure constant. Then strictly, we are talking of absolute temperature. So that means when you use temperature, you have to use the temperature which is converted into Kelvin and not temperature which is in degrees Celsius. So mathematically, we are saying that volume is directly proportional. So volume is represented by uh, V, then directly proportion proportional, we use the proportionality simple. So these are proportionality simple. So it's directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So temperature is noted by capital T. So mathematically, V is directly, that is the volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature. That is if we keep pressure constant. So of course, to remove the proportionality simple, we simply introduce equal signs with a constant. In this case, we are using our constant K. So this equation will become V is equals to KT. Then if I make K subject of the formula, I'll simply divide both sides by T so that I have V over T being equal to K. Of course, where K is a constant, and in this case, the K actually represents the pressure because we are keeping pressure constant under the Charles law. So if V over T is equals to a constant, this one means that if you take the ratio of volume and temperature at any given point, uh, keeping the pressure constant, we expect those that 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 ratio to be actually equal for different points so this one simply means that if i take v1 over t1 which is the volume of a gas at a given point uh, divided by the temperature of a gas at that particular point it must be equal to v2 over t2 so it must be equal to the volume the ratio of the volume of the gas at a, at a given point 2 divided by the temperature of the gas in kelvin at that particular point 2 so a point to note that this particular formula, that is V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2, is only applicable 
when temperature t is expressed in kelvin because even from our law we are talking of absolute temperature remember absolute temperature is simply the temperature which is expressed in kelvin next we look at the relationship between celsius and absolute scale remember celsius simply means the temperature is in degree celsius while absolute scale simply means that the temperature is in kelvin so a graph of volume against temperature so this one simply shows you that a temperature of 273 degrees celsius corresponds to a temperature of zero kelvin that is along the absolute scale there then a temperature of 173 represents 100 kelvin a temperature of zero degrees that is on the celsius scale will be equivalent to a, a, a temperature of 273 uh, that is on the kelvin scale or on the absolute scale therefore if you want to convert temperature from degree celsius to kelvin you will simply add 273 so temperature in kelvin is equals to temperature in degree celsius plus 273 but if you want to convert temperature from kelvin to degree celsius you do the opposite so you subtract 273 so if i make theta degree celsius subject of the formula this formula will simply become temperature in degree celsius is equals to temperature in kelvin minus 273 then we look at an example so our example reads that 0 0.02 um, cubic meter so this is actually volume so our first volume v1 we are given as 0 0.02 uh, cubic meter of a gas at 27 degrees celsius so this is the initial temperature but we said that uh, the formula for the charles law only works when the temperature is expressed in the absolute scale or when the temperature is expressed in kelvin therefore i'll convert the 25 degrees celsius that is 27 degrees celsius into kelvin so we have said that if you want to convert the uh, degree celsius to kelvin you simply add to 73 therefore 27 degree celsius if i want to convert to kelvin i'll simply add to 73 so 27 plus 273 you'll get a temperature in kelvin uh, that is in the absolute scale as 300 kelvin so is heated at a constant pressure until the volume is 0 0.03 cubic meter so this is our second volume or v2 so volume 2 v2 is equals to 0 0.03 cubic meter so then they want us to calculate the final temperature uh, of the gas in degree celsius so they want t2 so the second temperature is t2 is the unknown so from the values that we are given we simply use the charles law which stated that if you have v1 over t1 it should be able to give you v2 over t2 so our v1 is uh, 0 0.02 then divided by our t1 is actually uh, 300 kelvin must be equal to our v2 is 0 0.3 cubic meter divided by our t2 is actually the unknown t2 so remember that because this one we have converted to kelvin the t2 that you will get it, it will actually be in kelvin so i'll do cross multiplication so i multiply uh this side by t2 then 300 will multiply by 0 0.03 so on cross multiplication we shall have 0 0.02 multiplied by t2 being equal to 300 times 0 0.3 or 0 0.3 times 300 so of course this will just be 0 0.02 t2 uh, 0 0.02 t2 being equal to 0 0.03 multiplied by 300 so 0 0.03 multiplied by 300 then i'll divide both sides by 0 0.02 so that i get t2 being equal to uh, 450 uh, kelvin so to convert my kelvin back into degree celsius i now use this relationship so to convert degree celsius into that is kelvin into degree celsius you simply subtract 273 therefore temperature in degree celsius because the question wanted us to leave our answer in degree celsius the temperature in, in degree celsius would simply be equal to 450 minus 273 which gives us 177 degrees lastly i have an exercise that i recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned in case you have any challenges in handling any of the questions feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in and as usual i'm always here to try and help where possible so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that challenges are meant to help us discover our strength but not to expose our weaknesses so the quote is encouraging us to embrace challenges in life because our mental strength can only grow when we overcome those challenges therefore don't limit your challenges instead challenge your limits 
And lastly, recall that being challenged in life is inevitable, but being defeated by those challenges is optional. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. In case you know any student that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly refer them to Kind Tuition Academy or just uh, share my link with them. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.